How often is it that you read a book or watch a movie and don't quite care about the characters? Have you ever felt that your own characters, main or side, either lack depth or all feel as if they sound the same? In the realm of writing tips and advice, talking about characters and creating characters is not a new topic, but it is an important one. Characters carry us through the story. They are what make us relate to the plot, experience the setting, and care about what is happening. This video may be a mix of new ways to approach crafting your characters, or you might hear similar advice just stated a bit differently. As an aside, and further to this point, I found this happens all the time when I'm coaching or teaching. Often what I'm instructing is not always that different from what other people have seen before or taught before. It'll likely be the same moves or technique, but perhaps with specific emphasis here or added detail there. The main difference is in the way similar information is restated is how it is said, described, or broken down. I can't tell you how many times a student of mine has had that aha moment after having seen the same technique over and over again, but then someone new comes in and says it a bit differently, leading to their understanding. I've been on both sides of this. It happens to all of us. But back to characters and why they are important to storycraft and writing. A great plot falls apart if we don't care about the people or the characters feel shallow and made of paper. Making believable characters ooze with complexity and depth is not as easy as it looks. But using the methods that I'm about to cover, I believe will help you get on track to creating characters that people will fall in love with, hate, relate to, and leave a lasting impression. First, establish the basics. There are some basic building blocks that make an individual stand out as an individual. When we are creating a character, it is important to have an idea of what these things are. Most of this does not have to be overtly written into your story, but can be delivered to the reader over the course of the narrative, or be a reference for you, the writer. Having an understanding of the basic building blocks of your character will often aid the plot, create opportunities for conflict and tension, and give your story depth, feeling more alive. Consider what your character's beliefs are. And remember, everyone has some sort of belief system or a structure loosely based on their understanding of the world. Our belief systems determine everything that we do and don't do. You, the writer, should understand how these are important to the plot and theme, but do not necessarily need to come out explicitly. They may take place in the background or in your cast's mind. And largely, it should only take center stage if it has to do with the main theme or plot. It is often better to give your character a strong position regarding a belief that relates to the plot or theme. This can be used as a position to create conflict and tension between other characters, the world, and themselves. Character's backstory is likely the most common thing a writer will work on when it comes to creating their character. This is probably because crafting a backstory is exciting and the most tangible aspect of these basic building blocks. And it's not a bad thing. We all come from someplace and someone. It is in those places that makes us who we are today. The experience that we've had or have not had, along with the communities that we're part of or not part of, make us unique. Remember this, and remember how it might impact or change your character's beliefs and personality. The backstory of your characters will make them unique amongst your cast, as well as give them depth. Try to consider where this character comes from and what they have been through in their life. These facts and details can be dulled out slowly, over time, or explored in flashbacks, if they are important to the plot, arc, or theme. With your character's beliefs established and their backstory developed, it's time to give them purpose and personality. Consider what makes them important to the story and what their personality archetype is. There are a number of resources that can be used to develop a personality template or outline. A few that I use, and many others use, are the Enneagram types, the 16 different personalities, and even Myers-Briggs. 
A great book that's helped me craft better characters and explore different personality types is The Road Back to You by Ian Morgan Cron. I'll put the link to it down below. The personality and purpose of your character should be compared to the rest of your cast. Having too many characters with similar backgrounds and beliefs and personalities will make your story feel bland and ununique. This part of creating your character will also be reflected in their voice. So be mindful of how well the reader can distinguish one character from another. Oftentimes when a character feels like they sound too familiar to the others around them or lacks a voice of their own, it is because of a breakdown in the basic building blocks of our characters. If you, your critique partners, or beta readers note that one character sounds too similar to any other or that they may lack agency, try thinking about their beliefs, their background, or their personality and purpose. One way that we can also view our characters' purpose and personality is through their wants, their needs, and desires. This is something that can be inferred by the reader and should be the bare derivative of each character. I've often used this to get a better understanding of my main POV characters and how their wants, needs, and desires can help drive the plot to a thematic arc. Sometimes this exercise is helpful at the start of a new project or if you feel like you've written yourself into a corner and need a fresh perspective. Consider this the starting point. The thing that your character wants will not be what they need. The want is something that is going to be overcome and is ground zero for your theme and character arc. This is something that the character and reader are aware of. Consider this your end point. At the conclusion of your character arc, they will realize that what they want is not what they need, and the character changes, for better, for worse, or neutral. This will depend on your character's character arc and any archetypes that you might be following. The needs versus wants will be a reflection of your theme and your plot. This is something that the character and reader are aware of. The desire is a bit more abstract. Often I have seen this substituted for the goal, but found that the goal is just an external viewing of the want. Instead, the desire is something that the character is not aware of, but the reader is. Something like being loved or wanting an intermediate goal that is either too short or too abstract to be the want, i.e. to carry us through to the end of the story. The desire can be subplots and be true and obtainable by the characters. The final of our three is another trio that I heard during a podcast episode on the Kate and Abby show. I'll leave a link to the show and their channel down below. It's a really great listen. Kate and Abby talk about writing better chemistry between characters, but I think we can take a bit more away from this episode and see how creating better characters in general using the weapon weakness want method. This will seem similar to the wants, needs, and desire method, but there are some large differences. This is a great method to use for any and all characters, especially if they play a role in an important scene. In my opinion, this should be used as a quick reference or something that is quickly sketched out just to have an understanding for the scene. What is it that your character is good at? This should be seen as the character's greatest strength. What is the weapon that they can use in a conversation, in a conflict, and throughout the scene or story? What is your character bad at? In the story or scene, what is the flaw or perhaps a misunderstanding of the situation? What is getting in their way and stopping them from achieving happiness? It is always good to have an understanding of each character's wants to understand how you can stop them from achieving them, or at least set roadblocks for them to overcome. The wants of different characters can be pitted against each other to create tension and conflict, enriching your story. If you watch for this long, thank you. As a recap, we first want to establish the basics with our character. We want to understand what their beliefs are, what their backstory is, and what their personality and purpose is for the story. 
After that, we can take a look at their wants, their needs, and desires to fully understand their overall arc and how they as a character might relate to the plot and the themes of our story. And finally, the last of our three methods, we can use the weapon, weakness, and want method to understand each character's role within a given scene. Characters are just one of the many pillars that make up a great story. Without a powerful plot or strong themes, our story may not resonate with a reader. But having great characters is the start and is essential in telling a great story. My name's Cameron. I'm a writer, an editor, a freelancer, and the creator of Wrestling With Words. In my past video, I talked a little bit about myself and my own writing. But if you're curious to see what I've written, I've linked a few short stories of mine down in the description below. But let me know what you're wrestling with. I'm always curious to hear what other writers, storytellers, and creatives are working on, what their successes are, and what their struggles might be. If you haven't already, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. And I'll see you next time.